duty of care, work health and safety. Well, we'll start with the image. You can see that's a hot air balloon being inflated. Now, that's both a workplace, of course, they've got employees in inflating the balloon, and a public space because they're taking passengers on board the hot air balloon journey. Well, this particular hot air balloon journey did not end well. I've subtitled it Duty of Care, Work Health and Safety, Don't Wear a Scarf If You Go Hot Air Ballooning. Uh, a lady called Stephanie Burnorth went hot air ballooning at 5 a.m. on a chilly Alice Springs morning, as you do. It was cold. She wore a long scarf wrapped around her neck twice, and then it was tied loosely at the front. As she walked past the inflation fan, and you can see the fan in the middle of the screen there, uh, the long white lightweight tassels on her scarf were sucked into the fan. They became entangled in the fan blades and the scarf pulled tightly around the neck. She later died from strangulation. Now, Outback Ballooning owed a legal duty of care to its passengers. The crew breached the duty of care by failing to provide a safe path for passengers to climb on board the balloon basket. The crew had positioned the inflation fan in the path of the passengers. And as they walked behind it, of course, the scarf was sucked in. The breach of the duty of care was the failure to install a fan guard to protect against the risk of harm to passengers. Of course, there were two legal dimensions. Firstly, outback ballooning had to pay compensation to Ms. Bernard's family for her loss. Don't know what it was, but guessing somewhere between half a mil and a million dollars. Second legal dimension was the fine. They were fined $130,000 for not providing a safe workplace, which was in breach of work, health and safety laws, which everyone calls WHS. So a bit of a tragic tale, but it can happen to anyone if you don't take proper care.